Good evening. Welcome to the May 22nd, 2018, 7 p.m. Gardner Planning Commission meeting. Uh, my name is Larry Powell. I'll be the acting chair for, to start tonight's meeting. Uh, just as a couple of points of order for you. Uh, we've noticed as people have come in, not all of you have signed in on the uh, guest registration sheet in there. If you would please do so, uh, it helps us in a couple of different ways. Number one, it helps us be able to figure out who attended the meeting uh, in case there's a, a question on a name if you come up and speak and we didn't hear you clearly on the tape uh, on the machine. So it gives us a point of reference for that. It is also very helpful for us just to track uh, what our attendance is for that type of activity. And a short reminder to all of the people on the diocese up here, uh, these microphones are hot all the time, but for them to work properly for our person to catch all the minutes on the tape, you have to kind of lean forward and speak into the microphone or at least at the microphone so that uh, we don't we hear you clearly and we don't have a question of mumbling. We generally don't have too many cross conferences, but once in a while it happens and it gets a little hard to hear when we're when we're taping the minutes over and uh, verbatim. So with that, uh, I would uh, ask us to call the meeting to order and I would rise and ask us to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And with that, we'll call roll call. I'll start on my left. Roberts here. Bowden here. Austin here. Brady Powell. here. Sorry. Kevin. Simmons Lee here. Garden Hire here. Powell Acting Chair. Okay, we will now do the consent agenda. All matters listed within the consent agenda have been distributed to each member of the Planning Commission for study. Those items are considered to be routine and will be enacted upon by one motion with no separate discussion. If separate discussion is desired on an item from either the Planning Commission or from the floor, that item may be removed from the consent agenda and placed on the regular agenda. Are there any items from the uh, on the consent agenda that the uh, diocese wish to remove? Hearing none, is there any item that the uh, public wishes to remove? Hearing not, I would make a motion for the approval of the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, motion, Scott. Second, Brad, for uh, approval of the motion of the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstain? Motion carries. <coughs> Our next item of this uh, business uh, will be for the election of officers. We need to take nominations and vote for first a chair of the Planning Commission. Once that person's elected tonight, they will take this chair and do the remaining election for a vice chair. So I stand open for nominations for a chair. It can be anyone that's on the diocese. I'd like to nominate Brad Austin for chair. I have Brad Austin. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Do I have any other? I have a motion and a second. All those in favor of electing Brad as chair say aye. 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 All opposed? Any nays? Brad? I don't know if you want to abstain or <laughs> say sure. I do. I do. <laughs> In that case, I turn the chair to you. Thanks. Okay, bear with me. Uh, our next point of order is electing a vice chair. So I will open for any nominations for vice chair. I nominate Brady. I second. I have a motion and a second for Brady to be vice chair. Any other? I'd like to withdraw. I appreciate the vote of confidence, but I. My work schedule will not allow any extra work. And it's hard just making some of the meetings, so I, I apologize, but would, would like to withdraw my name. Okay. Understandable. I, I'd like to nominate Tori Roberts. I second that. 
the nomination and a second for Tory Roberts as vice chair. Any other? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Say aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? Any abstained? Okay. Congratulations, Commissioner Roberts. Did you want to go Oh, I'm all right. Do I have? You don't I can. Have to. I'm all right right here. All my stuff's already all here. <laughs> all comfy. I'm good. Hmm. Yeah, I was trying to catch up to where we are. Oh, okay. I think we're here now. Okay, next item of business is the City of Gap Gardner Capital Improvements Plan. Uh, consider, making a, and consider making a finding that the CIP is consistent with the Gardner Comprehensive Plan. Have a staff presentation. Tonight's presentation on the CIP can be broken down into three major components. First, I'll present a CIP overview, then I'll go over the conformance report, and then staff's recommendation that the Planning Commission finds the CIP in general conformance with the comprehensive plan. We do this every year because in Kansas statutes, it says the, C uh, the Planning Commission has to review public improvements and utility improvements to make sure they conform to the comprehensive plan. This can be done on a project by project basis, or like tonight, you can review the entire CIP as an entire program. And the CIP process has four major components. First, staff has to identify needs of the community <coughs> and uh, develop projects and scopes to address those needs. We have several planning documents that help guide that process. We have the CIE, the Capital Improvement Element. 
We have master plans, we have utility assessments, feedback from citizens, and then also staff's expertise. After we develop the projects, we have to determine the cost of the projects. And we look at not just the initial project cost, but any ongoing operational costs that will affect future budgets. And we generally have way more capital requests than we have ability to fund those requests. So we ask every department to prioritize them each year. And once we've done those first three steps, we have to develop a, fun, a financing plan. And essentially, if we cash fund a project, it will have an immediate impact on the budget. If we debt finance a project, it might not have an immediate impact, but it will affect future budgets because you'll have annual debt payments. And one last thing to take in consideration is the asset life of whatever project we're doing. So it makes sense to, if you have a 10-year useful life of a new asset, to have debt financing that matches the useful life of the asset. Just go over a couple terms. Capital budget refers to the 2019-2020 budget. CFP program is a five-year program that is 2019 through 2023, and that's also incorporated into the budget document. The capital improvement element includes several different project schedules, but has up to 20 years of uh, projects, and that's incorporated into the comprehensive plan. It's chapter 12. The highest level of conformance a project can have with the comprehensive plan is for it to be specifically mentioned by name. So I'm not gonna go into uh, detail on the ones that are already mentioned. Planning Commission has already reviewed them. There's already been, they were included in the CIE and then incorporated into the comprehensive plan already. And if you have any questions on the projects from the last slide or this slide, there's more information in the agenda packet or you can ask me at the end of this presentation. We also have projects that weren't specifically mentioned in the comprehensive plan, but staff still finds them in general conformance with the plan because they adhere to general policies or goals outlined in the plan. Some of those would be high quality and dependable public services and facilities, maintaining safe and efficient transportation network, balanced park system that supports connectivity and supporting growth. First one, a high quality, dependable public services and facilities. The reconstruction celebration park um, parking lot project includes removing the current surface, placing a new base material before putting down a new, the new surface. The reason this project is a high priority is because we consider Celebration Park our, one of our crown jewels for the parks and rec system. That's where all the visitors go. That's where our residents go for a lot of tournaments and league games. So we want to make sure it's a high performing and high quality venue for Parks and Rec. At the direction of the City Council, staff has started the design work for the sanitary sewer for, at the airport. Construction will take place in 2019. Staff plans to do a study on how to best implement the smart meters for water and electric. And then they plan to contract out the installation of meters later on. This would allow us to read meters, do cutoffs, obtain demand information, identify outages at the, and identify out, outages at the office. At the direction of the city council, the outdoor fitness court project was included in the CIP as a placeholder, but it'll only be approved if it's 100% covered by sponsorships or grants. The airport terminal building at Hangar has significant deficiencies with electrical, structural, fire hazards, insulation, access, and ADA compliance. There's also active water intrusion, significant water damage, and spore growth. It was the conclusion of the Building and Economic Development Department that the vacant portion of the terminal building and flight school should be remain closed, and that it should be less expensive to replace than to repair the existing facility. The wastewater treatment plant neutral, nutrient removal project includes the installation of an anaerobic selector basin to achieve nutrient removal. This may be required by future operating permits. The project costs about $5.85 million and will only be done if it's actually mandated. Supporting the goal of maintaining a safe and efficient transportation network, 
We have the Trail Reconstruction Project, Phase 3. This includes North Center Street Bicycle Pedestrian Pathway, the South Center Street Pedestrian Bicycle Pathway, and the Stone Creek Park Trail. Safe Routes to School Project includes sidewalks near Moonlight Road from Warren Street to White Drive. The project fills in gaps of existing sidewalk and trail network. Acquiring the Gardner property will give the airport control of land within the existing runway protection zone. Center Street Rehab Project involves a partial re road reconstruction that is needed to help protect one of the city's main north-south arterials. Failure to reconstruct the sections of the road will create the need for complete reconstruction. Center Street sidewalk improvements will address an existing sidewalk gap on the west side of Center Street where pedestrians are forced to walk in the grass. The project will provide a continuous sidewalk that will include widening the existing sidewalk on Center Street Bridge. The bridge improvement was identified in the Main Street Corridor study. To support growth, there's a wastewater project to extend or the, the water main extension. The Quail Meadows subdivision is currently a single supply or po single point of supply due to expansion of the subdivision. A secondary source should be installed to prevent water outage in case of a main break that runs along 167th Street. The line maintenance division has grown from five to nine persons over the last three years, and current office space is limited. A new building near the Energy Center will be built to house all staff and materials and equipment. These projects are listed under growth, but they could easily be listed under high quality and dependable services as well. The CIP has a combination of projects that were identified in the CIE and then were incorporated in the comprehensive plan. They also have projects that fit under the general policies and goals of the comprehensive plan. So it's staff's recommendation that the Planning Commission entertains a motion to find the proposed 2019 through 2023 capital improvement program in general conformance with the comprehensive plan. Thank you. Uh, this item is not a public hearing item, but if anyone from the public has any comments or questions, we entertain those. And if not, any members of are we supposed to comment now about the 175th Street corridor project? The no, that, uh, well, no. This would be just on the, the CIP that was just presented. Uh, the 175th, uh, I believe, is. That's item number five. That. Number so five. Item number five. Okay. Yeah. Later. Later, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just had one question on the, the second page of the spreadsheet that uh, it says projects by department. You spread it out over five years. I get all that. What's, what's strange to me is in 2022, we're only asking for 2.9 million, and all the other years it's much higher than that. So why that huge dip? And you would think you would spread out your expenditures over pretty evenly over, the, over that five-year time period. Keep in mind, some of the other years, while they might have higher project costs, they're most likely going to be debt financed, so the cash flow out of the city will actually be spread out over time anyways. This is to show when the project costs are incurred. It's not really when it's really affecting our fund balances. <coughs> and was that for a specific department? Which department was that? Well, it's, it's a summary of all the departments. Um, you know, if you average it out, it's about $10.6 million per year mm -hmm. if you did evenly. So I was just, it seems strange to me that there's this huge dip in 2022. And maybe there was another expenditure the city is anticipating that's outside the CIP. I, I don't know. But. Well, generally, they each director looks at uh, their own projects and sees, like, what they try to spread them out, first of all, but then also when is the improvement actually needed? And like I mentioned before, that project cost isn't the same thing as um, kind of cash flow outside the city. So one year might have like $30 million in projects, but that could be, you know, a couple major road and pro projects like a water treatment plant. The thing is, we'd be issuing debt for those. So those annual debt service payments would be spread out over time. So you're saying in 2021, the, the need during that year is 
over 17 million, but the very next year, it's under 3 million. Yeah, and for some reason, I mean, that's just how sometimes they want to schedule the projects. And once again, that's not the same thing as when the cash is always leaving the city. Other questions? If not, I would entertain a motion. I make a motion that the planning, planning commission uh, finds the proposed 2019 220, 2023 capital improvements project in general conformance with the comprehensive plan. Second. Got a motion by Roberts and a second by Bowden that the planning commission entertain or the planning commission find the proposed 2019 through 2023 capital improvement program and general conformance with the comprehensive plan. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries with all in favor. Next agenda item, Gardner Business Center, northeast corner of Moonlight Road and East Warren Street. We'll have a rezoning application, preliminary plat, final plat, and final development plan. We'll assume we'll hit each of those in order. Uh, we have a staff presentation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Michelle Cricks, planner with the City of Gardner. And this evening, I will be presenting uh, four separate um, presentations to you regarding the Gardner Business Center. I'm first gonna just kind of lay it out real quick. I'm gonna uh, first discuss the rezoning application and the attached preliminary development plan application, which is part of the public hearing and then allow discussion uh, members from the public to come to the podium and the opportunity to speak and um, then let the Planning Commission um, discuss and have questions on the project. Uh, then I'll go into talking about the preliminary plat and then the final plat and final development plan, giving uh, the Planning Commission an opportunity to uh, have discussion after each presentation. So first we're going to discuss the uh, rezoning um, and the uh, attached preliminary development plan, which is case Z1804 and PDP1804, which is a request to rezone about 12.19 acres from C3, which is a heavy commercial district, um, R2 to family residential district and RM, um, residential manufactured and mobile home plan district to CP3, which is planned heavy commercial district uh, in the preliminary development plan. So in front of you um, is um, it's a general location map of the site um, up in the upper left hand corner <coughs> with the entire city of Gardner with the uh, red star highlighting the general location of the project and then an aerial in front of you with the entire project outline in blue. This property is currently unplatted and undeveloped. Um, there are two parcels. You see the entire area is um, basically boxed in by Moonlight Road to the west, Warren Street to the south, Conestoga on the east side, and Santa Fe Street on the north. There are two uh, properties that are not part of this application. Um, at the northwest corner is an auto dealership, um, which was originally constructed as a gas station in the 1980s and changed hands and changed ownership, excuse me, in 2016. And then right in the middle of the property, creating kind of a keyhole is how I'll refer to it throughout the presentations, is a veterinary clinic, which was constructed in 2003. Both of these properties have a C3 zoning designation which was um, zoned as part of an um, overall larger zoning, um, zoning case in the 1970s. 
So just a quick overview of the project. Um, but this project, uh, of course, is going to be five applications um, on the uh, menu for tonight for discussion. There is the rezoning I just discussed, um, the preliminary development plan, which is tied to the rezoning, the preliminary plat, the final plat, and the final development plan, all on 12.19 on 12 acres total. Um, it is located at the northeast corner of South Moonline Road and East Warren Street, which we've already discussed kind of how it's boxed in with Santa Fe and Conestoga. Um, the applicant is proposing um, uh, proposing um, on this site to consist of an office, a large complex, personal outdoor storage, commercial storage for outdoor ma major, and accessory outdoor storage. So just kind of uh, get an idea of what the site currently looks like. This is a view from uh, of the site from the north, from Santa Fe. Um, on the left-hand side, you see some uh, buildings. That's going to be your veterinary clinic. And there on the very far right, you're going to see kind of the building of the uh, auto dealership, Moonlight Road, being on the far right-hand side of your photograph. Just kind of sh uh, it's going to show in, uh, this photograph plus the next couple photographs are going to demonstrate uh, the undeveloped nature of the parcel. And it looks like that they've used this maybe for some agricultural purposes as well. This is a shot of the part of uh, the property from the east from Moonlight Road. And this is from the very northeast corner at Santa Fe and Conestoga. And you can see in the background on this picture the resident, the mobile home park of uh, Conestoga in the background. So currently this property has three zoning designations. Um, and then you look at the graphic in front of you, you can see C3, which is the heavy commercial uh, district. You're gonna, that's taking up a majority of the site. The R2, or two-family residential, is along um, the very south um, bottom there of Warren Street. And the RM, which is the re Residential Manufacturer and Mobile Home Plan District, in that very bottom right-hand bottom corner there adjacent to Warren. Both the commercial and the manufactured home zoning designation was established prior to annexation of the property in 1971 and 1973. This whole property was part of a larger annexation project in 1978. The R2 zoning designation adjacent to Warren was um, approved in approximately 1982. So if you're wondering about kind of the odd layout and the kind of the odd zoning layout of the site, um, Warren Street originally was supposed to cut straight across from Conestoga, Conestoga Street over to Moonlight in a straight line fashion. Um, however, in 2009, 2010, there was a major um, road improvement project on Moonlight Road, which included widening the road and putting in that median that is currently there. Um, because of that median, it's shifted Warren Street down to the south a little bit, curve out down to the south, and then cut across the north part of uh, Conestoga Park. Um, so the resulting uh, the resulting road layout, and the Warren Street was constructed after the road improvements on Moonlight Road, results in our current zoning layout that you see in front of us. So the area highlighted in blue in front of you is um, our subject site for tonight's discussion. Um, and um, just kind of wanted to show the Planning Commission what the surrounding zoning designations look like uh, within our neighborhood. So again, you can see the property at the north uh, northwest corner and the keyhole property um, is also zone C3, which is within line with the current zoning designation of the site. Uh, directly to the north across Santa Fe is actually CP3, which is the planned heavy business. Um, and then there's C2, which is general business. M2, uh, which is the general industrial district. Uh, more C3 to the um, east, uh, R2 and RM, which is our um, residential um, and the manufactured residential to the south. Um, the R1 on the west side across Moonlight um, is actually a KCP and electrical substation. And then we've got a little bit of M2, kind of kitty corner across Moonlight and Warren uh, down to the southwest. Just kind of give an idea of what our utilities look like currently. Um, 
that we see that we've got um, the sewer, which is highlighted in green across the north of our site. Uh, red is going to be um, indicated with the red lines. The dashed line in red is our overhead power lines. We have gas down Conestoga. We've got some stormwater inlets. And then um, across the south property line, there is um, a water line, although um, that water line is still being verified. Uh, there's some question of whether or not that line exists, although the county uh, utility line, or utility um, GIS layer does say it's there. There's some question whether it is in fact there, so that's going to require some additional uh, investigation by the um, by the engineers. And just to kind of give a general idea, hopefully this is coming out pretty clear. This is an aerial with one of the site plans laid over the top of it. Just to give an idea of what, uh, if approved, the site fully developed, how it will look. Um, we've got the, the darker, uh, darker blocks on your screen are going to be actual uh, buildings. Um, the um, on the uh, right side, you've got a couple blocks with the shaded. Those are going to be one other use. You've got our detention basin. We've got parking. Just to kind of get an overall idea of what the site will look like um, over an aerial, just to kind of give a, a general reference on that. So one of the big um, questions when we're considering a rezoning is how it's going to comply with our comprehensive plan. Um, the land use map in front of you is actually going to be from the Main Street Corridor Plan, which was recently adopted by uh, the uh, City Council. And with um, that Main Street Corridor Plan was incorporated into the Gardner Comprehensive Plan by reference. Uh, that plan, um, the Main Street Corridor Plan, built upon previous planning studies um, to bring a cohesive vision to enhance the quality of life and provide a sense of place uh, to the Main Street Corridor. This particular parcel um, that we're discussing this evening is included within that study area um, of the Main Street Corridor Plan and was identified as a community mixed use land, um, on the future land use map. The future land use map included in the Main Street Corridor Plan what does supersede the future land use map found in the 2014 Comprehensive Plan on those parcels within the study area. Um, you might remember last month at the April 24, 2018 uh, Planning Commission meeting, um, the Chief Planner presented Land Development Code amendments um, to update future land use categories uh, to correspond with the comprehensive plan based on recommendations from the Main Street Corridor Plan and include the addition of the Community Mixed Use Land Use. The community mixed use is a future land use category and is proposed to correspond with the CEO district, which is office, uh, the COA district, or neighborhood business, and the C2, which is general business. And that supports a range of neighborhood businesses and residential uses. These amendments were recommended for approval by the Planning Commission and will be considered at a later date by the governing body. The intent of the community mixed use land use category is to provide retail and professional services uh, for people working or residing in the community. These needs, these needs excuse me, can include civic uses, grocery, retail, restaurants, hotels, professional, entertainment, office, and medical commercial uses. The community mixed use land use category was located in this area to provide a buffer between the more intense zoning classifications, which including industrial along the north side of Santa Fe and the manufactured mobile home park south of Warren Street. The C3 district also permits the uses proposed by the applicant. Although the proposed CP3 zoning district, which is the planned heavy, uh, heavy business, um, does not correspond with the community mixed use future land use category, the main uses associated with this plan development are permitted in both the C2 and C3 zoning districts. And the uses, but not the zoning designation, are consistent with the Main Street Plan and the Comprehensive Plan. The office space provides for professional services for the community. The professional storage use could, use, uh, could provide a valuable service for residents of the adjacent mobile home park who may have limited opportunities for storage on their property. The applicant has proposed um, an area for outdoor RV storage, which corresponds with the commercial storage and outdoor major designation, and a small area for accessory outdoor storage associated with the professional service uses. 
These uses are not consistent with the zoning district that is consistent with the adopted plans. However, the development is designed so that those uses are located in the interior of the development and largely screened from adjacent street, streets, scapes, and properties, which I will address further in the presentation. Additionally, the outdoor storage use could be considered a short-term commercial investment supporting long-term regional commercial growth areas. The comprehensive plan and the Main Street Corridor plan have provided a commercial area plan which identified a, the commercial center at Highway 56 and Cedar Niles Road where Walmart is uh, for regional commercial. The comprehensive plan has indicated that short-term commercial investment should be focused in other portions of the community where infrastructure already exists and we're supporting residential and industrial development support a market for such development. So the uses associated with the CP3 uh, zoning district will not negatively impact the character of the neighborhood in South's opinion as these commercial uses have been established in the area and will allow a higher and better use of the property. The plan district will allow the planning commission to evaluate the compatibility of the uses that are proposed with this project as part of a preliminary development plan. Because this is a plan district, no other um, no other outlay or excuse me layout of the site uh, or other um, uses as requested by the applicant would be uh, would be permitted if approved. Therefore, if the property owner does not move forward with this project or wishes to make substantial changes to the plan, they would be required to revise a preliminary development plan and would be subject to a public hearing at the planning commission. The proposed rezoning to CP3 will not substantially change the current zoning designation of the property. It is proposed to change from a straight zoning designation to a planned district with a preliminary development plan tied to that zoning designation. And as I've previously mentioned, any changes outside of the approved uh, preliminary development plan will require a new plan to be subject to a public hearing at the Planning Commission. Given the current zoning layout, rezoning uh, the parcel to single zoning classification provides the opportunity to more effectively develop at the property. Staff has calculated that the residential zoning designation uh, along the south portion of, our, of the parcel is approximately two acres and is long and linear along Warren Street, which would be a challenge to efficiently develop that portion of the property. As part of the plan district, the applicant can request departures or deviations from the standards for a project which require a higher degree of specific planning based upon the complexity of the project, the relationship of the site to the context, and the ability to meet or exceed the purpose, intent, and objectives of the land development code. The applicant has requested some deviations regarding this project. First, they've requested a departure uh, regarding section 1704 dot 010 B to st street network. The code requires a maximum block length of a thousand linear feet and a block area of five to eight acres in a suburban context. This section of the code provides where oversized parcels are platted for special land uses or development projects that involve large scale buildings and patterns. Platted blocks may be larger provided the internal access streets mimic the block structure and urban design amenity of these standards and create logical extension and connectivity to the public streetscape. In this case, the internal drive functions as a frontage road to access the portions of the lot split by another undeveloped parcel within that keyhole area that we discussed earlier. The logical location of a street splitting this larger block has already been developed and staff recommends approval of the larger block for a campus development assess, accessed by a drive, by driveway function in a similar manner to the frontage road. The next departure requested by the applicant is departure of the standard regarding accessory buildings. The code requires, regardless if the accessory structure, um, the accessory building over 120 square feet is for residential or commercial purposes, the land development code does not make that distinction. There are certain standards for those accessory buildings, which include um, that the accessory building shall be at least 10 feet from the principal building. There's no more than one accessory building per lot. There will be at least five feet. Uh, that it be placed at least five feet from the rear or side lot line, except that any accessory building provided a garage access if a, of a rear alley may be located within three feet. Uh, no more than one and a half stories or no higher than the principal building, whichever is less. 
um, will be limited to no more than 30% of the required rear yard or 560 square feet, whichever is less and be constructed with materials, architectural details and style and roof forms that are compatible with the principal structure. Um, the applicant is proposing an accessory building on the first lot to be 6,000 square feet in size and located, it'll be located behind um, big, basically buildings um, on phase one and phase four. We'll get into the phasing here in a little bit. The accessory building is proposed uh, to be available to all tenants of the business center to store vehicles overnight and weekends. And staff believes that this accessory, this accessory building can serve a need to the businesses wishing to locate in Gardner. Rather than providing multiple accessory buildings on site, a single building is proposed for multiple users, which is a more efficient use of property. Third departure requested by the applicant is regarding permitted uses. Uh, the office, large complex, and personal storage outdoor are permitted in the underlying zoning district, which is the majority zoning designation on the site. The other uses proposed, the commercial storage outdoor major and accessory outdoor storage is not permitted in, in the C3 in the C3 district. However, section 17.06.1 010B of the Land Development Code allows plan districts to include all uses that are applicable in the underlying zoning districts, but the development plan may propose consideration of additional uses in a limited or specific context. These additional uses are limited and centrally located within development and screened. The fourth departure to be, um, to be considered by the Planning Commission this evening is regarding transparency requirements on large commercial building types. The Land Development Code requires a 30% minimum transparency on street facing facades with, with additional requirements. This uh, request is only going to be is only applies to the storage units on the east side of the development. Staff is supportive of this request because of the intent of the personal storage units are to provide a secure location for belongings. By requiring windows into secure, year, secure units diminishes the purpose of those units to provide a secure enclosure. The applicant to, com to compensate for the lack of windows um, has proposed enhanced landscaping and adding uh, public amenities um, along Warren Street and along Conestoga. The fifth departure requested is regarding building setbacks for large commercial building type. The land development code requires a 25 foot front side and rear yard setback for this building type. The applicant has requested this deviation to allow for vehicular maneuverability around the site with, building, uh, with the building arrangements. Buildings have been arranged to accommodate traffic and building access for storage units and larger vehicles as needed. And finally, uh, the uh, deviation requested by the applicant is regarding foundation plannings. The land development code requires foundation plannings to be present along at least 25% of street facing facades and to be at least eight feet deep. Foundation plannings also include one small tree for every 40 linear feet of foundation and one shrub for every 10, 10 linear feet of foundation. The applicant has requested the deviation from the required eight feet in depth of the foundation plannings to maximize the storage and parking yard behind the building to accommodate various needs for potential users. What has been proposed on building one um, is a foundation planting bed five feet in depth. The depth of the rear yard behind building one is 118 feet deep. So providing the additional three feet of foundation plannings could reduce the depth of the storage yard to 115 feet, which should be sufficient room for, to, for vehicular maneuverability. I want uh, just for the Planning Commission to know that the applicant has complied with the other foundation planting requirements outlined in the land, land development code with percentage of foundation required and the quantity of plant varieties. Staff has stipulated um, that the foundation plantings are to comply with section 17.08.030A of the Gardner Land Development Code and be at least eight feet deep. So in front of you um, is the proposed uh, preliminary development plan for the project. Um, as I stated before, the um, project is uh, proposed to be 12.19 acres in size and is mostly divided um, in the middle by about um, a 1.8 acre keyhole, which is all owned by a single property owner. 
Um, adjacent to the northwest corner of the property is an auto dealership. And just a reminder that neither the veterinary clinic um, centrally located where our property wraps around nor the auto dealership is part of these applications. So on the west side of the property, um, the applicant has proposed three single-story multi-tenant office buildings with storefronts and large overhead doors in the rear. Um, and then, of course, the, as we just discussed, behind uh, building one, there's a large storage yard and an accessory structure um, to be uh, proposed to be located. The accessory structure is proposed to be three-sided building. Um, and is available to the tenants who need to park vehicles overnights and on weekends. The storage area behind building one would be screened from the streets uh, by buildings one from Warren Street, building two from Moonlight, and the accessory structure from Santa Fe Street. So uh, when we get into um, that building that's going to be adjacent to um, Santa Fe, that's actually a fourth phase building. Um, the storage yard would still be screened because of that accessory structure if approved. Evergreen landscaping is proposed along the east property line to screen the storage, uh, that storage area from the vet clinic on the east side. And the applicant um, has indicated that they plan to submit for the second building in the very near future. Um, it was my understanding from a com conversation I had in the next couple months um, because of heightened interest in the project. Now on the east side of the keyhole, the applicant has proposed outdoor personal storage units with two accessory outdoor storage areas for RV or boats. One of those units, uh, the outdoor or the uh, one of those outdoor storage areas, uh, which is um, oriented east to west, uh, will be screened from neighboring property owners and streets by other buildings. The other outdoor storage area, which is oriented north to south. Um, is screened from Conestoga with other structures. However, the applicant will need to provide screening, which complies with um, the screening section of the code uh, for Santa Fe and Warren Street and has been stipulated to be addressed at the time of final development plan. Otherwise, all accessory uses on site are internally located with little or no visibility from the street. Primary access into the development will be from Warren Street and um, onto kind of an internal uh, a drive that's functioning as an internal drive to either the office building or storage. An additional access point is proposed along East Santa Fe with building four at a future phase. The applicant has provided an additional fire only access point at the northwest corner of the lot um, adjacent to the auto, auto dealership which would be 20 feet wide and gated with a Knox box which only the fire department would have a code to. There is an existing ingress egress easement on both the applicant's property and the auto dealership, which was dedicated by both a plat and by separate instrument. Access easements are established to allow access over property and they do run with the land. At the northeast corner of the development, a stormwater detention area is proposed and will be constructed at the time the personal storage units are constructed, again if this project is approved. Along Warren Street, a 10-foot bike hike trail is proposed with seating and enhanced landscaping. The bike hike trail um, would provide a connection from the Moonlight Road bike hike path uh, to the mobile home park, other businesses, and retail uses to the east. This bike hike path along Warren complies with the Main Street Corridor plan to enhance the city's off-street pedestrian and bicycle network. Public Works um, did express some concern regarding the impact of the intersection at Warren Street and Moonlight Road with increased daily traffic from site and no signal to aid in turning movements. The concern centers around those vehicles wishing to make a left turn onto Moonlight Road from Warren Street. With increased traffic on Moonlight, making a left, hand, left turn from Warren onto southbound Moonlight Road would be delayed and cause and could cause a considerable car stacking situation on Warren Street. Therefore, staff has stipulated with the next phase of development for this project, a right turn only lane shall be constructed on Warren Street to create a dedicated right turn only lane to go north and then a, a separate dedicated left turn only lane to go on southbound Moonlight. Uh, staff did uh, receive one comment from the public regarding this project. Uh, 
we uh, staff did receive an email correspondence on May 16th and a hard copy was received as a follow-up on May 18th. Um, that letter has been included in the pa Planning Commission packet for public review and to has been incorporated into the public record. Staff recommends the Planning Commission uh, recommend approval uh, to the governing body of case Z1804, a request to rezone 12.19 acres uh, from C3, which is heavy commercial district, R2, two family residential district, and RM, residential manufactured and mobile home plan district, to CP3, planned heavy commercial district. Uh, Planned Heavy Commercial District, and Preliminary Development Plan for the Gardner Business Center, Parcel ID CF231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a Preliminary Development Plan dated May 9, 2018, to the governing body subject to conditions, and the recommended motion is in front of you for review. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. I uh, will now open the public hearing. If anyone would like to comment on this item, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Individuals are allotted three minutes, or individuals representing a group are allotted seven minutes. And this would be a great time for an applicant presentation if we have one as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Uh, my name is Mark Huggins. I'm with Payne and Brockway. We're the uh, civil. We're providing the civil engineering and surveying services for this project, and this this will be the applicant's presentation. Uh, here with me tonight are Mike Brock and Carla Brock, the owners of Moonlight Holding, and Larry Lisbona, the project architect. Uh, we've been working on this project with staff for two or three months and and uh, real happy with where we're at on it and, and I don't know how I can improve on the pre staff presentation or the report uh, the only thing I, I would say as staff mentioned there there's been a tremendous amount of interest in this project and and uh, it, it seems to fit in very well with the, with the people that would like to use it uh, I would also you know we would we'd be glad to answer any questions that, that any of us you might direct at any of us but uh, we've got four applications here and I'd be happy to get up and do this again for all four but I would just like to say we're in agreement with the staff reports on all four items okay. thank, thank you, you. And any other members of the public wishing to speak? Please come forward. Good evening. <clears throat> Roger Templin with Payne and Jones Law Firm, 11,000 King, Overland Park, Kansas. Uh, here tonight on behalf of um, William and Betty George, who are also in the audience tonight, and David George, who is with the, the car dealership that's on the corner that was referred to as not being part of the project. But um, if you've had an opportunity to look at the uh, packet, you probably will see the, the objection letter that my client said Ed uh, asked me to put together for you tonight. Um, a couple of issues that I think are important to point out, and uh, I certainly respect your time and certainly respect the fact that uh, you're all here on volunteering your time. I served as a planning commissioner in my city, DeSoto, for eight years, so I totally get how this works. Um, by that same token, I also know that it's like to, to put together a, a comprehensive plan or modifications to that. And it certainly looks like your Main Street corridor plan is something that you all took quite a bit of time and, and pride into developing. And one aspect of that was the East Gateway sub area, which happens to include the, the par parcel to be rezoned. Um, it's pretty clear from reading that plan that the East Gateway sub area is to be an extension of downtown to focus on developing neighborhood and community serving retail businesses. I know that it's been referred to a couple of times in staff report anyhow uh, as the use that's being proposed may include temporary uses or temporary investment. 
but that certainly seems like it's something very different than what you had proposed as part of your overall Main Street corridor plan. I'm not really sure I know what that means. Um, certainly it appears to, to my clients that this is going to be a, a large storage facility for building equipment and for large trucks that obviously is a concern to them as their neighbors. Um, it may eventually turn into RV storage or something like that and the screening in and of itself may be perfectly fine from the perspective of a person walking along the street, but in terms of development of this area and how it ties to your master plan, we have significant reservations about that and don't think that's really what my folks making the investment that they did into their property anticipated would develop around them. Um, your plan goes on to say that, you know, the uh, recommends that the city support any plans for reinvestment, expansion, or new investment by existing or additional grocery, food stores, work with commercial property owners to maintain viable retail spaces. This what appears to be a construction site for storage materials and, and offices related to that seems very contrary to this overall plan. Um, Garner performed a retail gap analysis included and concluded the city be able to support approximately 130,000 feet of future convenience goods, uh, $186,000 of shoppers goods, 61,000 of eating and drinking retail space. This is all in connection with the plan having to do with this area. Under both the former comprehensive plan and the new Main Street quarter plan, the property issues placed in land use categories that typically don't accommodate this kind of temporary use or construction storage development. On the point of the storage facility, there are, I believe, four storage facilities that are relatively close to this property. And uh, I'm certainly no expert on what the demand for storage space is, but as far as personal storage for the folks over in the, in the uh, uh, mobile home park and the manufactured home, there are many options for them. I don't think this is designed to service that need, at least as I see this plan, and I could be wrong about that, but I'm sure the applicant can tell us more about it. Um, bottom line is that my client believes that there is a better use for this property. And yes, it's undeveloped at the moment, but my client has certainly taken a, a significant investment in this corner, um, generates a, quite a bit of sales tax for the city, and is very proud of that and proud of what it's been able to contribute. Uh, you would like to see the plans develop along the Main Street corridor that are consistent with that. And, and with all due respect to staff, my clients certainly think that this is an inconsistent project with that overall plan. Um, with that, I don't know that I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. And like I mentioned, the property owners are here if you have any questions for them as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to speak on this item tonight? Please come forward. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm Larry Lisbon. I'm an architect uh, on the project. Um, actually, for the for the first building, the other things are kind of you know future, um, but. I'm Shawnee, Kansas. Let me say that. Um, I guess I would like to just say a couple of things. Um, some of the terminology that was thrown out, um, or at least was in the proposal, talks about temporary construction, temporary use. I, I think that's a, a term that I don't know what it under means either. This is uh, just on behalf of the client, I'd like to say nobody has anything in mind that's temporary. This is a major investment for them. Uh, they're looking at high quality materials. They're not looking at a at an ugly storage yard. They're looking at um, very nice quality office warehouse, office space. The frontage streets or the street fronts on all the buildings are going to be stone, um, high quality materials that are dictated very specifically by the uh, city ordinances. And um, I guess I just wanted to emphasize one thing: the uh, the owner might want to speak about the future last phase uh, storage units, but I just wanted to say that there's nothing temporary about this. That's kind of a term that sounds <laughs> kind of sketchy to me too, but we didn't make that term up. That was just kind of in the verbiage. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other 
sorry, I forgot my pen. Oh. <laughs> Any other members of the public wishing to speak on this topic? If not, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. I have a motion to close the public hearing by Bowden with a second by Brady. Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? <coughs> motion carries. Uh, public hearing is now closed, and so this is Planning Commission discussion time. Um, so we can talk about any comments we have, questions, uh, any discussion items, and I think the past uh, plan of just starting on one side and <coughs> going around seemed to work pretty well, so um, go ahead and start. <coughs> I'd like to start off with a question for the um, owners. What kind of what kind of tenants are you looking for? Just out of curiosity, because it seems it looks like it's set up for as a flex space, but you're looking for office. I mean, it says office, but then you, it looks like a flex space. Um, my name is Carla Brock, and I'm an owner of Construction Management Services and Moonlight Holdings. I think what we're looking for mainly is people that need flex space, office in the front, and warehouse in the back. We've had some interest with um, existing gardener businesses that have outgrown their spaces and they don't have really any options at this moment. We will also occupy 51% roughly of the first building ourselves. We are officed out of Olathe right now. We live on Moonlight Street, just right outside of Gardner in Spring Hill. Um, and we're looking to move back to Gardner with our business as well. Um, that will be the same for all three office buildings. There are offices in the front and warehouse in the back. We're not really, I guess, clear on what you're considering heavy equipment or what the neighbor is considering heavy construction temporary. Um, we don't plan on having heavy construction equipment moving in and out um, of the area, just regular vehicles, um, regular deliveries, UPS, that sort of thing. No low boy trailers or anything of that sort. So I don't know if that, if that answer your Question? Yeah. Okay. I have a question for the lawyer. Um, if you could please. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, what was that? I'll answer that. I'm the lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was your name again, sir? Roger Templin. Roger. Um, so looking at the Main Street corridor plan, um, as, as someone who was on that committee, yeah. the parcel in question um, it didn't seem like it was it was part of what we were discussing with the east gate. Um, the east gate seemed like it was north of the railroad, and the commercial that we were discussing for the improvements in that area was for the north of the railroad track. The south was sort of always referred to as sort of an industrial area. Um, the CP mixed use was brought in later, so when you reference the Main Street corridor plan, I'm not sure what part you're referencing, because when I looked them up on page 41, Well, you certainly lived with it more than I have, so I would defer to your judgment on that. Um, looking at page 41 of that um, plan, and I specifically page 43. Right, it's 43. But um, 43 shows the east suburban, or the east gateway sub area includes this parcel. The, the map, uh, so 3.25, 3 which is what it references, is I believe two pages later. Okay. It shows the area that's specifically being talked about. <clears throat> and unless I'm mistaken, the area in question is not a part of this overall. Well, I'm, like I say, you're much more familiar with it than I am. This is what we were doing. The specific area in question that we're talking about tonight was actually not part of what's referenced on page 40. Okay, well, like I say, you're more familiar with it than I am. Just and from a layman's view and reading this and seeing this map, it certainly appeared to us that this was part of that. Right. So, so if, you're, if your position is that the Main Street corridor plan does not affect the zoning in the area, I don't think that's right. 
because I think it's part of it, at least that's what staff re referred to as well. well could could yeah. we get clarification from staff? Right. The Main Street Corridor Plan study area does include this parcel. Um, a lot of the recommendations um, pertain mostly to just the highway corridor through the area. Um, but in general, it is in the study area. Okay. Okay. Anything else for me? Uh, no, no. Okay. And I, I do certainly defer to your knowledge of the plan. You've lived it much more than I have. Um, the next question is actually for staff. You said that CP... You said that CP3 uh, does not correspond with community mixed use, or it does. I was, I was unclear on what... It was part of the presentation. So in the recently uh, proposed land use or uh, land development code amendments that was presented last month at the Planning Commission meeting, the community mixed use included the CO district, the COA district, and C2 district. Okay, but it's still not ratified by the council? It has not been accepted by council yet, no. <coughs> I think that's all the questions I have. questions just maybe just a comment the staff is recommending that we approve this so I'm assuming because of the recommendation this proposal is congruent with the mission of the Main Street quarter plan no is that a correct assumption that would be correct Even if it was inconsistent with the Main Street Corridor Plan, which was incorporated in part of the comprehensive plan, that's not required for the rezoning to take place. Compliance with, with the comprehensive plan is one of uh, the ten factors that you're permitted to take into account uh, pursuant to Kansas law. Um, it, factors were originally established in a case called Golden versus City of Overland Park and we have codified those at 17.03.030 uh, subsection B um, and so that is one factor and you don't have to satisfy all factors those are just factors that you as a body are to weigh in making your determinations. Very good, thank you. First of all, I appreciate the, uh, the letter from the car lot and what you had in that letter. Uh, I took that into account along with everything else the staff put. Um, you know, looking at the area and the master plan, I, I feel that it does the storage units themselves and where they're located um, on the east side of the development does fit within um, what's around the area and what should be allowed in there. Um, I did have some concerns or do uh, about the outdoor section that's on the west side. Um, I know that it's going to eventually be surrounded, but I do have some concerns about the time frame for that. Um, can you answer to how long you're looking to do like phase four or phase two? Our main focus is to get building one completed so that we can move in as tenants ourselves. Um, and then we'll start phase two right away. Um, phase three, I think, I mean, if our occupancy is at 100% on phase one and two, we'll go straight into phase three. Okay. So, and aesthetically, I understand the blocking of the storage units. We're going to be there and we have to look at it every day, too. We want it to look as aesthetically pleasing to the public and to our neighbors. Oops, excuse me as is possible um, you know so we're taking that into consideration we want it to be a nice business park we don't want it to be a standard storage facility with you know a few trees here and there we want to make sure it looks as nice as possible okay 
I've just, uh, you know, the outdoor storage area, that's basically a, a little bit of a deviation that we're looking at. And sure. I wanted to make sure that it was Excuse not me. going to be visible to the car lot. Okay, and that, that I'm not, I'll, I'll have to have one of them answer that question specifically. Mark Huggins again with Payne and Brockway. The the area around on the north side of the first phase one building is is not a storage lot. It, it's an area where the where the trucks that will be moving in and out of the back of the buildings can move around. Uh, it's not going to be like a lumber yard where you've got something stacked out there on a regular basis. Okay, I guess I misunderstood what that area there was going to be used for. Yeah. Um, the other concern that I still have is the traffic on Warren. Uh, I know that a right turn lane is going to be built, but going through that area, um, yes, it stacks up even now because the, the people turning right can't get to a right turn lane because there's not one existing, but it's primarily backing up because you can't turn left very easily. It goes south on Moonlight, so I'll just publicly state I, I still have concerns about the, the Warren Moonlight intersection um, and the possible added traffic that this will bring. Uh, other than that, you know, I appreciate the uh, the path and some of the other stuff with the project, but I do feel that it meets the uh, the master plan. So, Mr. Roberts. Uh, first of all, I think this is a great plan, and I'm a firm believer of allowing uh, property owners to decide what they're going to build in their space. Um, I'm not concerned that it's CP3, since it's already zoned CP3 north of East Santa Fe in that corner, so it's, it's very similar uh, zoning. And this property, I think the last zoning district you said was 1982. So there hasn't been a lot of interest in that land, and I think this is a welcome addition to that intersection. That's it. No questions, just a statement. <laughs> okay. Uh, for me, I think the only question I had, and that was just to confirm with staff, that the only reason this couldn't be done underneath of the current C3 zoning is because of the commercial storage and the accessory outdoor storage so we're which areas of the plan are we talking about on those two things is that the covered parking and and what else yeah it would be the um rv parking within the storage unit on the east side of the keyhole okay and um the uh the uh, vehicular storage on behind the first phase which is a three-sided enclosure so it only be um, open from the south so views from the east north and west should be obscured by the building okay Brad, I got, yeah I guess sort of a discussion point is anyone just interested in those 10 criterion? Because I, I have them printed, they're not very long. Do you want me to read them off real quick? Well, if you have to read them off, I wouldn't mind having a copy down for down the road to refer to it. Okay. <laughs> That's up to you. Yeah, if you want to read them. Oh, I'll say down here, okay. So the 10 criteria are basically the, the character of the neighborhood, the zoning and use of properties nearby, uh, the suitability of the subject property for the uses to which it has been restricted, the extent to which removal of the restrictions will detrimentally affect nearby property, the length of time the subject property has remained vacant as zoned, the relative gain to economic development, public health, safety, and public or and welfare by the current restrictions on the applicant's property as compared to the hardship imposed by such restrictions upon the property, the recommendations of professional staff, the conformance of the requested change to the comprehensive plan, and in particular, the relationship of the intent statement for the proposed district and how the specific application furthers that intent statement in relation to the comprehensive plan, 
the extent to which the proposed use would adversely affect the capacity or safety of any utilities, infrastructure, or public services serving the vicinity, and other factors relevant to a particular proposed amendment or other factors which support other uh, adopted policies of the city. I, I have one more thing to yeah, add. Based on some of those uh, sayings, I also liked the bike trail area that they were adding to give a sidewalk where there otherwise wasn't a connection. So I do like that too. If you're ready for a motion. I would entertain a motion. After review of application Z1804, a request rezone 12.19 acres from C3, R2, and RM to a CP3, and pre preliminary development plan for the Gardner Business Center, parcel ID CF231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a preliminary development plan dated May 9, 2018. The Planning Commission recommends approval of the zoning application and preliminary development plan to the governing body with the following three conditions. Foundation planning shall comply with all requirements of GMC 1708030A on the final development plan. The applicant shall, during the next phase of construction, construct a right turn only lane from westbound Warren Street to northbound Moonlight Road and create a dedicated left turn only lane from westbound Warren Street onto southbound Moonlight Road. And three, at the time of the final development plan, the outdoor storage within the public storage portion of the development shall be screened from East Warren Street and East Santa Fe Street in accordance to GMC 1708040. I have a motion by Brady and a second by Garden <clears throat> Garden Hire that after review of application Z-18-04, a request to rezone 12.19 acres from C3 Heavy Commercial District, R2, Two Family Residential District, and RM Residential Manufactured and Mobile Home Plan District to CP3 Planned Heavy Commercial District and Preliminary Development Plan for the Gardner Business Center, Parcel ID CF231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a preliminary development plan dated May 9, 2018, that the Planning Commission recommends approval of the rezoning application and preliminary development plan to the governing body with the following conditions. One, foundation planning shall comply with all requirements of GMC 17.08.030A on the final development plan. Two, the applicant shall, during the next phase of construction, construct a right turn only lane from westbound Warren Street to northbound Moonlight Road and create a dedicated left turn only lane from westbound Warren Street to southbound Moonlight Road. And three, at the time of final development plan, the outdoor storage within the public storage portion of the development shall be screened from East Warren Street and East Santa Fe Street in accordance with GMC 17.08.040. Any discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, all in favor. Next, we'll have a staff presentation on the final plat, I believe. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. Um, my name is Michelle Cricks, planner with the City of Gardner. And next up on uh, for discussion is the preliminary plat. Um, I promise you that the rest of my presentations will go probably much quicker now that we've kind of laid the groundwork for uh, the project. 
So just to refresher, uh, this is the proposed site layout and the proposed uh, preliminary plat for the 12.19 acres um, uh, development proposed by the applicant. Uh, we've got, um, of course, we've got the uh, two parcels that um, are not part of our application, the one located at the northwest corner of the site, and of course the long linear uh, property, the vet clinic uh, creating the keyhole in our property. And on the course, on the, on the west side of the keyhole, we have our three um, office warehouse type uses. Uh, and then on the uh, east side, we've got um, our, um, our personal storage and the outdoor storage as well. Um, access into the site, again, primarily will be from Warren Street, um, about uh, centered onto the property. There is an additional um, access that will be proposed from Santa Fe with a future phase of development um, when that uh, comes in but primary access into uh, the uh, storage units on the east side or primarily from our will be only from Warren Street as no other access points are proposed. So in front of you is a proposed phasing plan uh, for the development. Uh, phase one is gonna be in blue and that is the uh, parcel that will be um, subject to our final plat and final development plan uh, to be discussed here in a little bit. Phase two is that um, building or the rectangular building highlighted in yellow that area of the project the oriented north to south phase three as indicated by the applicant uh, will be the storage units and then of course phase four is that uh, property along Santa Fe I really don't have a whole lot uh, much else to add to this as a lot was discussed with the preliminary development plan and preliminary or excuse me in the rezoning so uh, staff is recommending the Planning Commission approve case PP-1803, a preliminary plat for Garden <coughs> Business Center, parcel ID CF-231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a preliminary plat, finding that all applicable requirements have been met. And there's your recommended motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, this item is not a public hearing item. Um, if there is anyone in the public who'd like to make any comments on it, we'll entertain those. But uh, I'm seeing no immediate movement. Uh, if anybody on the commission has comments, this will be our time to discuss. So start on my right. I'd, I'd be remiss if I, uh, I didn't say this, but the piece of property that we're discussing um, I've tried to personally at least get two developers interested in that piece of property and they didn't want to do anything. So kudos to you guys because you're, you're going into uncharted territory, I suppose. Uh, the other thing is whether accidentally or intentionally, um, they are trying to build something that I personally have been called about a few times uh, in the past two months. Do I have flex space available? And the answer is no. There's nothing in Gardner that's available. So. They're, they're building something that I think is absolutely needed in Gardner, so. Okay. I do have a, a question or comment on one section under um, Park C staff comment where it says um, the applicant has left the final phase for office building along Santa Fe Street as the final phase because he anticipates selling the property at a later date property owner plans to maintain control of the remainder of the property. Um, I just thought that was interesting as it's one of the office buildings that was planned. Um, <coughs> is there any other information on that or is that concerning or? And is the, the surrounding, I guess, Landscaping going to be built and just not that building, or okay. So originally, before we had as much interest in the in the project, we had planned on selling that portion to recoup some of our initial investment. However, due to the overwhelming interest in the flex space here in Gardner, um, we're going to 
follow through with building that last phase. And like I said, that just the timing just depends on our occupancy, which we expect to be you know, fairly quick. I don't believe I have any questions either, so I would entertain a motion on this item. After review of application of PP-18-03, a preliminary plat for Gardner Business Center, parcel ID CF-31430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22nd, 2018 and a preliminary plat dated May 9th, 2018, the Planning Commission approves the application after finding all applicable requirements have been met. Second. Yep. Do you we need to amend that motion to correct oh. the ID? Correct. Is we need a CF. We left off the two at the CF2. Oh, two. I apologize. So uh, if you so, just, just wish to reread the number, please. CF. Two three one four three zero dash one zero one one as amended okay. adjusted. So I have a motion by Commissioner Roberts and a second by Garden Hire that after review of application PP-18-03, a preliminary plat for Gardner Business Center, parcel ID CF two three one four three zero dash one zero one one located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a preliminary plat dated May 9, 2018. The Planning Commission approved the application after finding all applicable requirements have been met. All in favor? Please uh, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries all in favor. Now we'll see the final plan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Michelle Cricks, and this evening I'll be presenting the Gardner Business Center first plat, final plat case number 1801. Um, this is the final plot for the first phase of the Gardner Business Center, um, which uh, the copy of the plot is here located in front of you. It is um, for approximately 1.191 acres um, along Warren Street and adjacent to the veterinary clinic. So um, included uh, on this lot, um, as we've seen in uh, previous cases uh, for this uh, plat, uh, will be uh, one single-story multi-tenant office, office uh, warehouse uh, building type, um, an accessory structure, and some outdoor vehicular storage for short-term overnight weekends. Um, this plat does not propose any right-of-way dedication, but utility easements are proposed on the plat. Uh, the final plat is um, in substantial compliance with the preliminary plat. Now, because this is a previously <coughs> unplatted property, the applicant will be required to pay excise tax, which is levied um, when a uh, piece of land is platted. Um, this ta the tax is based on the square footage of the plat property, excluding any air, um, arterial uh, right excuse me, right-of-way dedication or parkland dedication. Uh, the current tax rate is 20, per, 20 cents per square foot. Uh, since the plat includes 1.91881 acres or 83,583.36 square feet of land, the applicant will be required um, to pay $16,716.67 of excise tax and will be paid prior to the release of the plat for recording. Staff is recommending the Planning Commission approve uh, the final plat 1801, a final plat for Gardner Business Center, first plat, parcel ID CF231430, 
1-800-2-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, based on a review of a staff report uh, dated May 22nd, 2018, and a final plat dated May 9th, 2018, and recommend to the governing body to accept any right-of-way and easements subject to conditions. And those conditions um, and the recommended motion are in front of you on the screen. Thank you. Thank you. Again, not a public hearing item. Uh, if anyone has anything they'd like to say, please come forward. And if not, then we'll start on my right again. I'm consistent. Well, I guess since I've made a comment every time, I'll continue. Uh, I do like the design of this building. As far as flex space goes, uh, it looks really good. That's why I was confused, because they kept referring to it as office. And I'm like, it does kind of look like an office building. So, uh, kudos on the design. Um, I'll second what uh, Commissioner Grunheyer is saying. I, th I think the development itself is well put together and well designed. Um, and I appreciate it going in there. And I appreciate, again, as I said, the, the path that you're creating too for bikes and pedestrians. Nothing new. I also have nothing new. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion <clears throat> that after review of application FP18-18-01, a final plat for Gardner Business Center, first plat parcel ID CF231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22nd, 2018, and a final plat dated May 9th, 2018. Planning Commission approves the application with the following conditions. Prelim preliminary plat PP-18-04 shall be approved prior to the release of the final plat FP-18-01 for recording. Number two, prior to the recording of the final plat, excise tax shall be paid to the city. Number three, the construction plans for any utilities, infrastructure, or public facilities shall meet all technical specifica specifications, and public improvement plans shall be submitted and approved prior to the release of the plat for recording, and recommends the governing body accept the dedication of right-of-way and easements. Second. The motion by Garden Hire and a second by Bowden that after review of application FP-18-01, the final plat for Gardner Business Center, first plat, Parcel ID CF231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street. A staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a final plat dated May 9, 2018. The Planning Commission approves the application with the following conditions. 1. Preliminary plat PP-18-04 shall be approved prior to the release of final plat FP-18-01 for recording. Two, prior to the recording of the final plat, excise tax shall be paid to the city. Three, the construction plans for any utilities, infrastructure, or public facilities shall meet all technical specifications and public improvement plans shall be submitted and approved prior to the release of the plat for recording and recommends the governing body accept dedication of right-of-way and easements. Any additional discussion? Uh, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Now the final development plan. Thank you for hanging in with me on the home stretch here. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, uh, my name is Michelle Cricks, planner with the City of Gardner. And uh, this evening, uh, the uh, final uh, portion to discuss uh, regarding the Gardner Business Center is the first phase final development plan um, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street. The proposed use of the site um, here is, and um, that's located in front of you here, is for 14,750 square foot um, multi-tenant, multi-functional single-story building and accessory building on 1.92 acres. 
which is the first phase for this development. The main entrance into the building faced Warren Street with parking and landscaping along the street. The applicant has included enhanced landscaping to, to screen the parking from the street and manufactured housing development to the south. Along Warren Street, a 10-foot bike hike path uh, with seating has been proposed, which further the goals and policies of the recently approved Main Street Corridor Plan. A six-foot sidewalk from the office building will provide, um, is proposed to provide a connection to this path. However, Gardner Municipal Code 1709-020C requires sidewalks with a primary route between the street and, or, or excuse me, or parking area and the primary entrance um, shall be eight feet in width. Therefore, staff has stipulated that the width of the sidewalk be eight feet in width. Um, additional, the applicant has proposed bicycle parking uh, to be provided adjacent to the building and is with an easy access to the bike path um, along Warren. This phase of development also includes an accessory building for the purpose of vehicular storage and will be located in, in the rear yard of the primary building. The structure, um, excuse me, the accessory building is proposed to be 6,000 square feet in size, three-sided structure and is proposed to match the materials and colors of the primary <coughs> building. The accessory building meets the standards for accessory structures with exception to size, which was addressed in the preliminary development plan earlier this evening. This accessory building is proposed to be available to all office tenants to use should their business model require vehicular storage. In that short term, the applicant has requested a deviation to the size, oh, excuse me, I apologize. Um, all of the requirements for the accessory buildings meet the code. Uh, the building for the first phase is proposed to be a large commercial building type and shall be a single story multi, multi-tenant, multi-functional <laughs> office building, which is the 14,750. The building materials proposed are a combination of a natural colored stone, glass, pre and pre-finished non-corrugated metal with in a taupe color. Surrounding buildings are mostly single story structures and the height of this building with a flat roof design does not exceed 26 feet in height and is in scale with the surrounding neighborhood. While this is a single story building, the additional height does include rooftop utility screens for mechanical equipment and vertical articulation on the building with respect to the public realm. As you can see, uh, the, uh, the uh, graphic in front of you is the south facing facade that faces Warren Street. So you can see where they've got the stone, they've got canopies, the glass, and um, then the metal screening and the pair pits of varying sizes to create um, some more visual interest rather than just a flat box um, adjacent to the public realm. I've also into, included a graphic of the proposed landscaping on this phase. You can see that the applicant is proposing landscaping along the north property line um, behind the um, accessory building, uh, providing a screen along the um, east property line with that uh, parking area uh, where they call the storage and parking yard um, adjacent to the building and then along within the um, along Warren Street within the public realm to show or to enhance that landscaping and also provide some screening. Staff is recommending the Planning Commission approved case FDP 1802, a final development plan for Gardner Business Center, parcel ID CF 231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, a staff report dated May 22nd, 2018, and a final development plan dated May 9th, 2018, subject to uh, the condition attached on the f um, motion in front of you. And just a note that was just there um, with um, regards to previous cases that if the deviations were not approved with a, a PDP, um, additional conditions would have been added to require the final development plan. However, because the PDP was approved um, and the deviations were approved by the uh, Planning Commission, you can please disregard <coughs> that note. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, again, not a public hearing item. Uh, if anyone has anything they would like to bring forward, uh, please do. Seeing none, Commissioner Gardner. I should have saved my comment for the facade for this one. I jumped the gun, but uh, so I got no comment on this one. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> 
Still all good. Still mm -hmm. all good. I don't think I have any either. Um, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before you proceed, may I make a quick comment regarding yes. the conditions? Um, the chief planner did bring it to my attention <coughs> that in the preliminary development plan, staff actually stipulated that the foundations, the foundation plannings must comply with the, um, yeah, with the requirements of the uh, Garden Municipal Code for foundation plantings. Right. So a condition to revise that final development plan to comply with the eight foot in depth foundation plannings should be included on this condition of approval. So there should be two conditions of approval with the eight foot sidewalk and then complying the foundation landscaping. Would, would that be all landscaping conditions or would it just be it would be the foundation plannings, which is adjacent to the foundation. The uh, applicant um, proposed the five foot. It was approved, and they agreed to increase that to eight feet in depth to comply with the code. And so that should probably be included as a stipulation of approval at the final development plan on this particular building. Thank you for that, and, and I actually did think of one question that I probably should have asked on one of the previous items but is there any concern with uh, adding all this new paved surface with runoff until the other phases are built I'm sorry we were discussing the oh that's the, all right the, um, are. So each each phase um, will have to comply with uh, the NPDES and our, uh, the National Pollution Discharge something. I don't know. It's a start or our stormwater management ordinance, mm -hmm. um, and so to the extent that they increase impervious surface, they will have to have a have a stormwater management plan to address that for okay. for each. So that's covered under the comply with the utilities and public improvement requirements. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Could I add a little bit? <laughs> sure. The, the, there is a, a national pollution disposal elimination system, NPDES, uh, which, which controls construction erosion and post-construction erosion from the site. And we'll have a stormwater pollution prevention plan associated with that, which which will go along. Uh, we, I think it was mentioned on the rezoning that the the stormwater detention basin would be part of a later phase. Right. So. Okay. Yes. Thank you. That works. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? On that entertain motion. I motion after review of application FDP-18-02, a final development plan for Gardner Business Center, parcel ID CF-231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street. A staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a final development plan dated May 9, 2018. The Planning Commission approves the application subject to the following conditions. Number one, the sidewalk connecting the front entry to Warren Street shall be eight feet in width as required by GMC 17.09.020C. And number two, a condition to comply with eight foot foundation planting to comply with city code. Second. We've got a motion by Commissioner Bowden and a second by Commissioner Roberts that after review of application FDP-18-02, the final development plan for Gardner Business Center, uh, parcel ID CF-231430-1011, located at the northeast corner of South Moonlight Road and East Warren Street, 
A staff report dated May 22, 2018, and a final development plan dated May 9, 2018. The Planning Commission approves the application subject to the following conditions. One, the sidewalk connecting the front entry to Warren Street shall be 8 feet in width as required by a GMC 17.09.020C. And two, uh, the foundation planting shall be 8 feet in width as required by the Land Development Code. Additional discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <coughs> Next on item on our, I guess before I go to, the, yeah. Okay. Next item on our agenda tonight, uh, number four, Olathe Health Urgent Care of Gardner, northeast corner of I-35 and South Gardner Road. We have a preliminary plat and a final plat. Staff presentation. Good evening, Commissioners. Ms. Shaw Leininger, Principal Planner. Uh, it's, it's that first presentation that was up. I could, but we when I'm referring pictures. to your pictures, <laughs> it wouldn't help you. Subject properties that we're talking about tonight are um, at the intersection of Interstate 35 and South Gardner Road. Interchange is at the northeast corner of that interchange. Um, the properties are um, highlighted in blue on your screen. This plat is a portion of these three properties. Generally, in the area where you see the driveway on the along Gar South Gardner Road. Um, there's a driveway entryway and it goes north. Um, the subject property is zoned C2 General Business District and undeveloped at this time. Um, as you read in the staff report, it was once developed with um, a motel on the northern property. And then the southern property um, was a mobile home um, sales office location site. Um, those have since been removed from the sites. Um, what you're seeing tonight is 2.7 acre portion of the highlighted 16.9 acres total. Um, the property to the north, which is zoned C2, um, there's currently a uh, gas station and liquor store where it says Phillips 66, and then the rest of it remains um, cropland and vacant. There is a cellular communication tower. Um, on that square kind of in the middle. Um, the property to the west across South Gardner Road is on C3 Heavy Commercial. Um, the only part of that is, well, there's a house located there, or is that gone? It's gone. Oh, there's a pile of a house there. Um, and then the Phillips 66 gas station. To yeah. the south, you see the right of way for uh, I-35. This is a zoomed in version of the preliminary plat. As you can see, there is one lot at this time. Um, the plan is for a larger overall uh, development of these three properties and then the property that's vacant to the north. Um, right now, the property owner who is Olathe Medical Center is wishing to bring forward one single lot and then come back at a later time with an overall uh, development plan for the area. 
Um, what you'll see here is one lot that and a portion of a street to be dedicated. Um, it shows here as 190th Street. Um, we have confirmed that it would need to be renamed to 189th Terrace. Um, that kind of helps with the existing addresses that are already there um, between 188th Street and 191st Street. Um, the lot is a little strangely shaped on the east. Um, this is for the purpose, well, this is a draft site plan. You will see this next month. Um, this, like I said, is part of a larger overall plan um, and it will connect to a larger uh, campus, medical campus facility. Um, that will be actually connected to this building. So at this point, they're, they're making their urgent care facility self-sufficient. And then at a later date, when they come back with the overall plan, um, those property lines will be removed and it'll just be one large lot. Staff findings for the preliminary plat is that the comprehensive plan identifies a property for regional commercial uses. Um, this project is consistent with it in the long run. It's for a large lot um, uses that will draw in people from the regional area. Um, the medical facility, larger med medical facilities uses will do that. Um, additionally, this is for an urgent care facility. Um, there is no urgent care facility. Um, cue the lights and sirens. Um, on this end of town, so that will be helpful. The, uh, the Latham Medical Offices that are um, further north on, I guess at that point it's South Center Street, um, that will remain. Um, that is a different type of facility that is more medical offices um, and walking clinic. Um, this will be an urgent care facility, so those will um, remain in use. Um, no phasing is identified, though this is basically the first phase in a larger overall plan uh, does not deter future development of adjacent property it sets up the street um, to be extended to the east um, though they they will need to show a temporary turnaround at the end of that street for um, fire truck and um, to be able to turn around at the end of the street um, one thing we do want to mention is about it does not impede anticipated future infrastructure improvements. However, um, we are working on a um, study for the interchange area as far as the realignment. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you this. North is actually to your left. Um, this is the the um, I-35 and Gardner Road interchange study that has been going on. Um, this is the option that council has supported. Um, our public works staff has taken this to KDOT and they have said, yes, we, we also agree with you that this is probably the more appropriate um, interchange realignment. There's actually, this is kind of an interim fix to the intersection. Um, there's a long-term fix that actually addresses the um, bridge and 191st Street south of the interchange. Um, what you'll see is a, in the middle here, there's an alternate connection to Gardner Road between 188th and 191st, and then that shows a connection um, at 188th. Um, this is still up in the air as to where that connection will be. Um, KDOT has has stated that the the what is labeled on your screen as an alternate connection does not mean there are spacing requirements, but that's not necessarily a huge concern because that happens um, all over. So they're still working with um, KDOT at, to figure out which is the appropriate alignment. Um, let me see what the let me look at my notes here. The public works director gave me some information last minute. Um, 
We have not received a traffic study for this project, which is one of the conditions um, you'll see on the final plat. Uh, that will help us address um, the intersection, which would be somewhere near here, whether that needs to be um, full access. If, if we get the alternate connection here, that will be um, an intersection with a light with full access. Phase of this project. Um, just today, the traffic study got completed, so we did turn that in today, but staff hasn't had time to review that. Um, regarding the uh, intersection improvements, um, I guess first of all, we do agree with all of the staff's comments and don't have anything to add other than uh, one key point, and we're going to have one other, I'm going to have uh, Payne and Brockway come up regarding stormwater. But one key aspect for our development is, is we bought this property, uh, this 24-acre tracks, uh, a number of years ago was to build a, a hospital campus here and, to, and to building that hospital campus access off Gardner Road was critical if we are not able to have access off Gardner Road uh, then we have to rethink uh, the the use and how we would build this campus if we would build this campus so it's critical and we're not 100% sure but we do believe that the KDOT jurisdictional authority is just south of where this access point is but I know that, that sometimes can uh, be blurred lines, but we're hopeful that uh, the uh, city of Gardner will go ahead and approve a full, inter full access intersection at uh, 189th Terrace uh, at that location. That will be critical for us. Um, and also like to remind uh, uh, the, the uh, commission that uh, Lath has been in the, uh, involved in the city of Gardner for uh, well over 20 years and has been had facilities in the city of Gardner since 2002. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Like I said, Mark, do you want to address stormwater? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the Planning Commission. I'm Mark Huggins with Payne and Brockway. And uh, we just, uh, you know, we've reviewed staff's comments. We're in agreement with staff's comments. Uh, like the last project, this project will incorporate the MPDS permit and the stormwater uh, erosion control features. The, uh, the detention required for this site is part of a larger storm basin, which will be towards the east side of the site. So we're, we're uh, asking to delay that construction until we build the main part of the building and have an approved development plan for the whole site so and I'd, I'd be glad to answer any questions if you have any for civil engineering and surveying thank you thank you uh, questions from the commissioners surprisingly I have no <laughs> yeah. this is a that would be a great addition for the city of Gardner. And I know uh, I have the opportunity to be on an advisory board for Latha Health, and they value this community. They want to be an integral part of this community. I think they already have three or four establishments already in, in Gardner, and this is just part of their, their total vision. So uh, I welcome this with open arms. I don't have anything. I pretty much agree with, Ms. with Commissioner Brady. I think it's a welcome addition. I, I thought of something in the intermediate time. Okay. <laughs> I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. Uh, to whoever demolished the house to the west, <laughs> they missed an opportunity for a great bed and breakfast. Just throw that out there. I think my question, um, I was trying to reread it quickly and it's not working for me so hopefully I'm just missing something but in the staff report they talk about the road dimensions aren't as wide as we usually require and the sidewalk dimensions aren't as wide as we require but then nothing else is said about it in the motion am I missing something or does that come later um, I'll it, in the staff report, it talks about how the city engineer, the planning director, or the uh, planning commission can approve um, differences than what the suggested were. Oh, there it is. Um, the the city engineer has 
has done that. So he is he is comfortable with with what they have proposed moving forward. Okay. And you know, if if the traffic study comes back to say something different, we may have to revisit it. But which is anticipated an it, it's question. anticipated that it, <laughs> it will be enough right away in, in street pavement. So. so I guess question for, for probably for Ryan. Um, can we approve it based on the condition that there's nothing in the traffic study or the other studies that they haven't turned that we haven't reviewed yet? Uh, don't change it and if something in those studies raises a red flag for the city engineer then it comes back in front of us or do should we wait yeah you, you what I typically see in that type of scenario is um, that you know in the, in the in the case of like what we're talking about here with the, with the uh, right away with and the sidewalk with as long as it meets with city staff, staff's satisfaction, then, um, or in this case, waiver of um, the standard requirements, then, then they would satisfy the stipulation. Otherwise, if there is an objection, then the stipulation wouldn't be satisfied and they'd have to come back. So that, that's a way you could do it, or, you know, if you, I don't know about the timing on this. I'm assuming, you know, every developer is itching to jump. So, um, you know, everybody always wants their approvals now. So I, I think my recommendation would probably be to go ahead and approve it subject to that stipulation if that's your inclination. Okay. So we would add a, a fourth item that <clears throat> staff finds the traffic study was there something else missing that we need to include in that stormwater they're they're on the final plat okay so that but but you can add them to the to the preliminary plat if you feel that you want those included yeah and th that's an excellent point you're going to see this again right. on the final plat, although your the scope of your review is more limited than on the preliminary per the <coughs> per our uh, ordinance. But you, you will see this again. So if I, I imagine if there's concerns, then um, it can be it can be raised at that time. Well, we we see it again as soon as we do this motion. It's <laughs> the next item. <laughs> 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 so I just want clarification. So we don't need to add a fourth to this. It would be when we see the final plat, we we then add the stipulation that providing that the stormwater and traffic study don't raise a red flag. Well, but the the uh, <clears throat> chairman made the astute observation, which I missed, that the uh, final plat is on. You're, you're basically considering these simultaneously, so it probably does make sense to have that stipulation. This is not already in the final plat, stipulated in the final plat, so we would take care of that next. There he is. Yeah, okay. uh, If we, on the final plat, well, on item five, we have a, a submittal and approval of public improvement plans prior to the release of the plat for recording. You could substitute your transportation and your stormwater study if you want to put both of those in similar language as an item four. Excuse me. Yeah, I think it's already in there in nine and ten. Yeah, but this is on the final plat. I'm just saying if you want to add them to this uh, item as an item four. For the suggested motion, you can just repeat those. 
up, up in this motion, which would cover, I think, the base that you're looking to cover. Although if they're on the final plat, I mean, it's a practical If that stipulation is there, then I, I think you're covered. Okay. Well, I, I, I have some concern about that, the way it's worded. I mean, it, oh, the way it's worded, they can just submit it. And if it raises all kinds of red flags, they've still met the, the requirement, right? They would have met the requirements, but they would not have had city approval for the construction, and we wouldn't issue a building permit until those things were done. Okay. The stipulation we, reads submittal and approval. Yeah. Oh, number ten. I should have yeah. just read two more two more words. <laughs> okay. And the alignment of the road with the possible Disregard. Um, okay. If no one else has additional questions, comments, discussion, I'd entertain a motion. I motion after review of application PP 18 02, a preliminary plat for parcels CF 221436 2004, CF 221436 CF 221436-2009 and preliminary plat dated March 14, 2018 and staff report dated May 22, 2018. The Planning Commission approves the application provided the following conditions are met. Number one, change the new street name to an 189th Terrace. Two, provide the dimensions on the north lot line of lot one. Three, provide a temporary turnaround for the end of the proposed street. Second. I have a motion Sorry. I have a motion by Bowden and a second by Brady that after review of application PP-18-02, a preliminary plat for parcels CF-221436-2004, CF-221436-2003, CF-221436-2009, and preliminary plat dated March 14, 2018, and staff report dated May 22, 2018. The Planning Commission approves the application provided the following conditions are met. One, change the new street name to 189th Terrace. Two, provide dimensions on the north lot line of lot one. And three, provide a temporary turnaround for the end of the proposed street. Any additional discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion passes unanimously, six to zero. Final plot. Uh, to carry on with our discussion here, um, here is the cleaned up version. Um, it is the final plat for the single lot and the um, what will be changed to 189th Terrace. Um, something that you may be wondering about um, that I just wanted to point out, you see some little hash marks along Gardner Road and a portion of the right of way along the new street. Um, we sometimes see that, we sometimes don't. Those are, denotes access restrictions just in case somebody had any questions about that. Um, so that means that there will no, there will not be any driveways or access to the adjacent streets from the properties in that location. Um, again, this is final plat, consistent with the um, preliminary plat. Uh, there are no deviations requested with this plat. Um, the staff recommendation, um, here's where we pick up all the conditions. Um, we have the recommending approval of the plat subject to the approval of the preliminary plat, um, removal of the building setback lines on the document, providing a street tree plan to review for review and approval, change the new street name to 189th Terrace, submit all approval of public improvement plans prior to the release of the plat for recording, 
payment of the excise tax prior to the release of the plat for recording, uh, update the Planning Commission Chair's name and Mayor's name on the document, provide a temporary turnaround at the end of the proposed street, submit a, Submittal and approval of a stormwater study, submittal and approval of a traffic study, and forwarding uh, the document to the governing body for them to accept the dedication of right of way and <coughs> easements. Thank you. Not a public hearing item. Any comments from the public? Seeing none. Any comments from the commissioners? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. Staff review of application PP 1802, a final plat for parcel CF 221 436 2004 and CF 221 436 2003 and CF 221 436 2009. And final plat dated May 11, 2018, and plat and staff staff report dated May 22, 2018. The planning commission approves the application. Provide the following conditions are met: items one through ten listed on page seven of the staff recommendation, and recommends the governing body accept the dedication of right of way and easements. Second. I have a motion by Brady and a second by Roberts that after review of application PP-18-02, a final plat for parcels CF-221436-2004, CF-221436-2003, CF-221436-2009, and final plat dated May 11, 2018, and staff report dated May 22, 2018. The Planning Commission approves the application provided the following conditions are met. Uh, one, approval of preliminary plat PP-18-02. Two, remove the building setback lines from the document. Three, provide a street tree plan for review and approval. Four, change the new street name to 189th Terrace. Five, submittal and approval of public improvement plans prior to the release of the plat for recording. Six, payment of excise tax prior to release of the plat for recording. Seven, update the Planning Commission Chair and Mayor's names on the document eight provide a temporary turnaround for the end of the proposed street nine submittal and approval of a stormwater study ten submittal and approval of a traffic study and recommends governing body accept the dedication of right-of-way and easements any additional discussion all in favor please indicate by saying aye aye, aye. any opposed motion carries six to zero Next item this evening is item five on the agenda, comprehensive plan amendment. Hold a public hearing and consider adopting a planning commission resolution adopting the I-35 and 175th Street interchange sub area plan and associated comprehensive plan amendments. Staff presentation. Good evening, Michelle Leininger, principal planner. Um, we're gonna switch gears here a little bit and go from detailed plats and development plans to big picture. Um, this item is kind of a two-part item. Um, we'll talk about the actual I-35 and 175th Street interchange sub-area plan and then amendments to the comprehensive plan document to incorporate that. Um, just some background as to the plan. Um, the process actually began back in 2015. Um, we held four meetings with property owners uh, doing various activities. We did a SWOT analysis. We did um, an activity where we took the study area, um, gave some direction, gave the um, attendees markers, and they got to make their own um, land use chart based on what um, we had told them and what they thought. Um, you'll see pictures of all of those uh, land use um, plans in the appendix area of the of the plan. Um, there's summaries of each of the meetings in in that um, appendix. 
Um, and then we went through um, a couple of more meetings with, with them of the four meetings where we went over the future land use map after we kind of brought everything together and um, gave a draft plan, draft map, and then we came back um, with the draft plan. Um, the project was tabled in 2016. At that point, we had um, a plan for the I-35 and Gardner Road interchange. We had them going on at the same time. Um, we had been directed to hold off on this one and move forward with one of them. Um, it was a lot moving forward at one time, um, and it was something kind of new to the community, so we were trying to get um, everybody on the same page as to what was going on, something new. Um, and so at that point, we put this project on hold for a little bit, um, directed to move forward again. Um, the other plan has been changed and adopted into the comprehensive plan. So we picked up this one um, where we left off. The, the council did do some brainstorming for this area as to what they would like to see too. Um, we made a couple of tweaks to the future land use map based from what um, was proposed and out in the public in 2016 versus what you see today, very minimal changes. Um, held another property owner meeting uh, April 25th just to reintroduce the project, talk about it again. Um, there were a few new property owners, so we got to bring them up to speed, um, got to introduce the, the changes to the land use map. Um, there were some changes to the actual draft, um, some updates to some of that, and um, they were able to provide comments um, as far as changes to the plan and such. And um, we have tweaked the plan, and that's what you see before you today. Um, the general plan layout, there's an introduction section which provides for the process overview, the framework, the background, um, some information and details as to the planning area, what we're looking at. The existing conditions, um, this is where we talk about the existing land use, the existing zoning, the existing infrastructure, existing environmental conditions. Um, it's a snapshot of what you see today. The recommendation section is the policy, goals and policies, future land use implementation. Um, that's going to be really the guts of your plan. Um, that's going to be where people will go to to find that future land use map, to find what those descriptions mean on there. Um, it goes into detail as far as based on the future land use category, what are the appropriate zoning districts that meet that, um, and then what types of uses would go in with that, and then how we implement the plan. And then, as I stated, the Appendix A is, is all the information from the meetings that um, we've had. Um, this is usually the part of the plan that developers will go to, property owners will go to. It's the kind of the core of the plan. This is a future land use map. Um, the bold colors are your planning area colors. Um, you'll see the gray and the, the real light yellow, those are um, city boundaries. Um, what you'll see here is um, a variety of land uses from low density to heavy commercial. Um, you'll see the areas around directly around the interchange being the regional commercial. Um, that's going to be similar to um, what's identified down at the Gardner Road and I-35 interchange plan. Um, those are gonna be your commercial areas that draw in regionally. Um, that just pairs off of what is already there on the, um, the existing commercial on the other side. If you travel further down I-35 to, um, you'll see some dotted lines along the intersection of Moonlight that shows up as a future interchange um, while well, that is not something that is planned for monetarily on the books or any of that, um, this is a, 
very future item that council still wants to show up on future plans um, to have that third access into the community um, if if the growth occurs on the south side of I-35 as planned in the this and the other plan um, we're going to need more access to the community um, something that that these plans really help the community with the city especially is um, for getting grants um, I know especially like KDOT grants, they will ask you in those applications if you have long range plans that support these things. Um, these long range plans, the comprehensive plan, the, the Main Street Corridor plan, those are all a foundation that we can use to support for those grants. So showing this interchange is something planned in the future we can use that to try to help get monies to build these things. Um, so that shows on there and it also shows um, community mixed use around that intersection. Um, that will help support not only the residential on the other side of the interstate, but the um, commercial, light industrial, heavy industrial type of uses that you see on um, the east side of that, that future road. Um, you're going to need supporting commercial type of uses for um, those that work at those industries. And then we transition. The green is a uh, floodplain, so we would, we would protect those, identify those for parks, rec, and open space. And we also use those as a buffer for a transition between uses. Um, you'll see a lot of on the other side of the, um, the streams, the transition to the medium uh, density and lower density residential development, which is your orange and your yellow. And like I said, this is, this is a, a land use plan. It's a general plan. Um, it's a guide. It's one of 10 review criteria we use for rezonings. Um, these lines are not set in stone. There's no acreages that go with it. There's purposefully no property lines that go with it. Um, so this is this is a, a foundational document, like the comprehensive plan that it will be, become part of. The other part of this uh, item tonight is the actual textual changes to the comprehensive plan, and it's just to add reference to the plan. So we would um, amend chapter one, the introduction, which just adds a reference to the plan, um, chapter 5 and chapter 11 all do the same thing and that really gets people to if they're reading the comprehensive plan it says hey we have another plan here that's more specific about this area and those goals policies and future land use what applies here um, staff recommends uh, Adopting resolution PC 1802, adopting the I-35 and 175th Street interchange sub-area plan amendments and amendments to the City of Gardner comprehensive plan incorporating the plan by reference and forwarding the recommendation to the governing body to approve the plan and incorporate the document into the comprehensive plan. And there's your recommended motion. Thank you. Uh, we'll now open the public hearing. If anyone would like to comment on this item, please come forward and state your name and address for the public record. Individuals are allotted three minutes or an individual representing a group is allotted seven minutes. My name is Marshall Jewett, J-E-W-E-T-T. -T. I live on Clare Road. I was at the 2015 meetings. It was tabled because the people that owned the property at that time did not want Gardner to develop over there. I don't care if you do something for an industry up there or something, but the homeowners at that time did not want it developed. I went to all the meetings. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Pull that picture back up and show us where Prairie Road is. Where Clare Road is? C-L-A-R-E. Clare, okay. It's the first road you hit. 
Here we go. Okay, I know where Claire is. I thought you had said a different street. I'm thinking, yeah. okay. I don't enunciate. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Okay. Thank you. Any other members of the public wishing to comment? If not, I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So, so moved. moved. Second. I have a motion by Roberts and a second by Bowden to close the public hearing. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Uh, public hearing is closed. Uh, Commissioner discussion. Gardner, Commissioner Gardner. I guess I just kind of have a question for. We are we are providing an overall plan, but we have if we have homeowners who don't want to be a part of that plan, what I mean, I guess how does that how does that fit? I guess I need more clarification on, on that. We're not we're not mandating anything happen. We're just saying this is what we would like to happen, right? The plan is a guide for when and if property comes into the city. Um, they could live there forever and not do anything with their property. The city is not going out and um, requiring them to develop um, or to sell or such. Um, it's just a plan for the future when and if it comes into the city, when and if it's developed. That's my other question. It's more of a comment. I just appreciate the city's uh, willingness to have the public meetings, uh, have property owner meetings, be very transparent through the whole process. That's what good cities do. I want to thank you for uh, waiting around and going ahead and doing your public comment. I appreciate that. Um, I don't know, just an informational thing. We have community mixed use down by Moonlight. Is there a reason why that wouldn't be um, regional commercial with the uh, interchange going there? I know this can only be adjusted. I was just asking. As a um, we, uh, we put community mixed use there um, being for the fact that we don't know when and if that interchange is going to happen. And um, it would be likely that the growth is going to happen around the existing interchange and grow out from there. So at that point in time, it would probably be something where we would be revisiting the plan to update it anyway. But um, that's kind of the basis for it. Okay, thank you. I don't have anything further. I, I have a question. A number of years ago, KDOT was gonna perhaps move the way station further south on I-35. It's been a number of years ago, maybe four or five years ago. That was kind of the talk, the hubbub. I've not really ever heard any more of that, but at the time, that might affect some of that area that we're planning for. Have we gotten any word on that? It's been a while. Anybody? Larry? Chair. Chair. Oh, yes, go ahead. Um, the uh, conversation, recent conversations that we've had uh, concerning uh, the movement of the way station uh, by the Kansas Department of uh, Transportation and the Kansas Highway Patrol uh, have centered around an area now that's located closer to Homestead. Okay. And the previous location that had been looked at uh, and the state still controls the south side of the old rest area which is uh, basically still part of the four lane highway system. And so it's not, it's within this area, but it's not connected to any outside roads. Uh, but that has now been basically bypassed and they're looking at, they're looking at areas farther south. That's so good. We, I don't, they don't think anybody wanted it there, but yeah. it was like the talk. So yeah. I haven't heard any updates. And updated, so. they don't have an exact location. They just okay. said that it'll be farther away now than in that location. That's good news. Okay. Thank you. I just want to follow up on that, that two or three weeks ago, I was uh, part of a meeting in Topeka that reiterated that same thing. They want to move the way station further south uh, from the Homestead. So uh, they're trying to catch the people that are going around it now. 
um, and that would be a better location for it is south of, of Homestead. So that's good for Gardner. That's Although good. there was talk if they moved it too far south that people would sneak through Gardner. <coughs> that's a whole other issue. So. <laughs> I don't know that it really matters. My question, the only question I can think of is the commercial and light industrial between Cedar Niles and the community mixed use there on the south side. Uh, it just seems like kind of an odd separation of our residential from the community mixed use, but uh, again, that's, I don't know that there's a need to change it at this point. Um, is there any specific reasoning for that? I Can you tell me again where you're looking at? I wasn't Sorry, following. Between Cedar Niles and uh, the community mixed use to the west, the on commercial the light side. industrial yes um it's just a continuation of of the the area from the north kind of a opportunity for transition through there okay yeah. uh kelly oh. oh yeah i attended the meeting with the city council members when they provided some input and uh, they wanted or they had envisioned that the community mixed use would be in the areas that were visible from the interstate and that the industrial would be further removed from that area where it was less visible um, i think that's one of the reasons why those two are where they are okay thank you i believe that was my only question um, Nobody else has anything, I'd entertain a motion. If we can flip back to that. I have to review the comprehensive plan amendment for the adoption of the I-35 175th Street Interchange Subarea Plan dated May 3rd, 2018, and the amendment of the City of Gardner Comprehensive Plan. The Planning Commission approves Planning Commission Resolution PC-1802 and recommends the governing body approve the plan and amendment. Second. A motion by Brady with a second by Bowden that after review of the comprehensive plan amendment for the adoption of the I-35 and 175th Street interchange subarea plan dated May 3rd, 2018, and the amendments to the City of Gardner comprehensive plan, the Planning Commission approves Planning Commission Resolution PC-18-02 and recommends the governing body approve the plan and amendments. Any additional discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries six to zero. Item number six on the agenda is being deferred until the June 26, 2018 Planning Commission meeting. Are there any additional discussion items from staff? Uh, yes, just a, a comment from last night's city council meeting. Uh, there was some discussion by the, the council on a review question for staff to look at a couple of items in the land development code, uh, mainly the, the size of uh, lots, uh, driveway widths and percentage of driveway coverage and street trees, particularly those, those items in the case of twin homes. Uh, they were specific. So uh, staff will be doing some analysis on those items and will probably uh, add something uh, to the June uh, agenda, but it's getting pretty full, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. But uh, so I just wanted to let you know that if you watched that, that meeting, you would have seen those comments and you would expect to, for us to say something to you. So I'm just bringing it to your attention that we'll be, we'll be reviewing that. and. Uh, they also mentioned signs, but they're going to look at, I think, holding a, uh, a review themselves, a presentation just among themselves uh, before they do anything with that particular item. So it's just these, the lots, 
street driveway, excuse me, uh, driveway width percentage of coverage in street trees. Well, for thank 20. you. And I want to welcome our newest member. Who's going to say? Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. And we're still one member short. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the review process in that, in that particular aspect is that the uh, the uh, parameters that they had given themselves to bring forward a member was that they wanted to bring forth a unanimous recommendation for the council to consider. They could not do that with the remaining four that they had previously interviewed of the five. Uh, they did bring one fourth, which was Kiva. Uh, then they, they could not come to an agreement on a second candidate. Okay. with a unanimous decision and so they are going back to re-interview and then um, resubmit to the council a, a decision uh, hopefully at the next in the next meeting in uh, june 4th i believe okay thank you anything else if not i entertain a motion to adjourn i make i make a motion to adjourn second Motion to adjourn by Garden Hire, second by Bowden. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries unanimously. Meeting's adjourned.